Welcome to Dust Geek. Now, this is one of my favorite projects you can do with the Raspberry Pi. The reason is it's super easy. Anybody can do it, and the payoff is fantastic. Now, I'm going to show you the setup of Pi Hole on a virtual machine because I recorded myself building one of these on my Raspberry Pi only to find out that simple screen recorder file was corrupt. So I either had to go through the whole setup process again on my own uh, machine or go through virtual machine. Hopefully this will work and you'll get to see some of these steps. But essentially what you need is a micro SD card for your Raspberry Pi, a Raspberry Pi. I believe it will run on anything from the zero on up. But in my case, I'm using the four, so I have a lot of power because I have a lot of traffic running through my home and I'm gonna do other things with the Raspberry Pi as well. This particular one also works as kind of an FTP server for me. So it's going to be dual purpose. Now, Pi Hole is quite amazing because if you want to stop seeing ads and speed up your internet, then Pi Hole is the perfect solution and you can put it on a $35 little computer. You do not have to connect it to some special connection on your network and figure out how to route things special. Um, basically, I just have this one set up on an ethernet port. Uh, so I have an ethernet connected uh, RJ45 jacked in. So regular internet cable plugged into my Raspberry Pi, although you could probably do it over Wi-Fi as well. So from your router to your Raspberry Pi, have an ethernet cable plugged in. Then you're gonna do some basic settings within your router itself, the one that controls your Wi-Fi or controls your internet uh, to point to this Raspberry Pi, the Pi hole, and that's it. And from there, you're gonna see all kinds of cool management tools and things at your disposal and your internet's gonna be faster. Now, why not just install ad blockers? Well, number one, uh, ad blockers have, you know, a lot of them have been in the news lately for, um, having issues or having back holes or serving their own ads to you in place of the ads you would normally see. Um, in addition to that, there are obviously certain browsers and things that don't have extensions where you're not going to be able to install that. And third, how an ad blocker works is it downloads the ads first and then just blocks you from seeing it. The way Pi Hole works is quite different, and this is why it speeds up your internet because it never downloads those ads to begin with. So it'll go to any site. Let's say you're going to yahoo.com. When you're going to yahoo.com, there are also a bunch of other web pages that are going to be displayed, the ads. So it's gonna reach out to Google Analytics, maybe Microsoft Analytics, one of these ad partners and start pulling in all of these ads as well. So you're not just pulling in the information you thought you were, you're downloading all this extra stuff. Pi Hole doesn't download that stuff sends fake URLs out basically in place of those ads. So where ads would be, you just have a blank spot and you haven't wasted your internet bandwidth downloading ads in any device on your network, whether you have the extension ad blocker set up or not, is going to benefit from this. So with that, I'm gonna show you how incredibly simple this is. Now, I recommend if you're not used to say, um, remoting into your Raspberry Pi that you just connect it to a monitor and have a keyboard and mouse and it will boot just like a regular computer. You're gonna install Raspbian Lite uh, or a Raspbian desktop on your Raspberry Pi device. And then from there, you're going to have a desktop that looks very much like this. No big deal. You should be used to this. Like any other computer interface, you got a menu up here, you have a web browser. You're gonna to go to Pi Hole, you're gonna click install. Now, uh-oh, look at all of this voodoo potential. Nah, you don't have to mess with any of that. All you have to do is grab this one command right here, this curl, it's gonna go out to the site and then it's going to run the bash script. Boom, just like that. And we're going to hit enter. And this is going to do all the configurations and installs for us. It's incredible, watch. So boom, you can see. It's already got, it's doing a root user check. It's showing us the little pie hole emblem here. It's gonna check for disk space. It's gonna update local cache. It's gonna start installing the packages. Just that simple, just that easy. The only other step we're gonna to have to do again is log into our home router once we get this set up and set it so that it sends the DNS to the Raspberry Pi, which is very, very easy to do 
um, and you're going to check the documentation for your particular router. I have the Orbi routers here, so I will show you how I do it in within my router. Yours may vary, but you're going to look for something very similar. Um, and, and it's so cool what you get out of this because uh, my wife, for instance, she was checking out after I installed this BrickSeq, which put all these ads all over the place when she would open it. Now there's nothing. Um, and it's any computer on the network. So the installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. The Pi Hole is free, but powered by your donations. So consider donating. I became a patron. I'm such a big fan of this. So consider doing that, either becoming a patron of Pi Hole or donating to them directly. Uh, it needs a static IP address. Again, I can do this. It's going to set a static IP address, and usually the routers respect that. But I'll show you within my router how I can set a device so that it always gets the same IP address and basically the router never assigns that out. And that's in case you have a power outage or anything else, your devices still know, need to know where to go look. And this address for this device is gonna set up, it's important that that stays static. So now you're gonna provide an upstream DNS provider. This is what looks up the name. So when you go to google.com, it's gotta go find it somewhere and it's gotta end it into some IP address, some number like you may be used to seeing in your home network, 192.168.1.1, which is the address to your home router. But Google has an IP address behind it as well. And you have a DNS provider that looks that up. I suggest either uh, Quad9, which a lot of people like, or Cloudflare, I'm a fan of. So we'll just click Cloudflare here. It's gonna tell you that there's a bunch of third-party lists out there, people who created already uh, you know, ad companies and certain uh, marketing companies and things to know where, what URLs they're using to, to send their ads through. And these people have gone and created lists out there that you can utilize. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave all of those selected here because I wanna use them all. You can tell it, I wanna use just IP4 ads or I wanna block IPv6. Again, let's just keep it standard. And do you wanna use your current network settings as a static address? Now, keep in mind, this is a virtual machine, so you'll probably see very different numbers here, but there's no reason not to leave this static, so you can just say yes uh, at this point. Now, this is where we're going to want to make sure you write this number down so that when you go into your router settings, you'll be able to uh, set this device to have a static IP address. You want to take this IP address here that it gives you, uh, and just pay attention to the, in this case, 10.0.2.15 and keep that and make that a static IP address. So I'm gonna say yes. The possible router could still try to assign this IP to a device, which could cause a conflict. In most cases, router smart enough not to do that. If you're worried, manually set it or modify DHCP reservation pool to this IP, blah, 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 blah. So at the end of the day, uh, I will show you how to go in within your router and uh, hopefully your router has this capability to set static IP address there. There are other ways you can do it as well. Um, do you wish to install the web server? Yes, again, we're just going through, do you want log queries? Yes. Now select a privacy mode for FTL. So you can hide domains depending on, you know, who's in your house. Maybe you have friends and it's, uh, you know, you have roommates and things and you don't wanna see the websites that they're going to because you're going to have all the traffic going through this Raspberry Pi. So you can hide things, domains and clients, go in anonymous mode. In my case, it's just family. So I'm gonna go ahead and show everything, um, but it's totally up to you and it's gonna retrieve the files and do our installation for us. I mean, this is one of the easiest installs you can set up and it is going to pay off in spades. And when I show you how cool the interface is, it's so simple and it gives you lots of information of what's going on in your network. And I just love that it's a one command install, basically. So once you have your Raspberry Pi set up, you put Raspbian desktop on it, um, then you just run that one command and boom, you are ready to go. Very cool stuff here. Love me some Pi Hole. Why didn't I do this years ago? I don't know, but I've been hearing about it. And so finally I had to get here. So now it's telling us, hey, you can configure to use the Pi Hole as the DNS server. Here's the IPv4 that I would use if I wanted to do that. And it gives you the web portal. So you can go and open up the web portal and start looking at the traffic that comes through it. So for privacy sake, it also gives a password here, which is great. I'm gonna destroy this VM once I'm done. Uh, so it won't be a big deal here. I'll go ahead and go to the PyHole administrative page 
and I've got my password right here. So here is our dashboard. Now that we've logged in, you can see there's total queries, one client, 29 domains on block list. Um, we have information on the query types, the queries that were answered by. We can go in here and look at, you know, disabling certain sites and have putting them on timeout. We can look at audit logs. We can check out network information here. We can look at our blacklist. We can whitelist certain sites, like for instance, destinationlinux.network, dosgeekcommunity.com. I don't even think there's any ads on there, but you'd want to whitelist them in case there ever was because you want to support those people. Some sites you really love, you want to support uh, with ads. This isn't a way to take away revenue. There's nothing inherently wrong with somebody running ads on their site, but there are sites that are insanely obnoxious and those are the ones really that you want to go out here and block. Um, if we go into settings here, you've got your ethernet address information. You have your host name, you have your username, Pihole. You've got, of course, the ability to restart DNS and control. It's just a very nice um, dashboard here that's very easy to understand with lots of advanced features inside of it. Okay, so now our Raspberry Pi is set up. We have all this information. How do we get the traffic to it? So this is where uh, we will, I will go ahead and show you my actual router so you can see how I set this up. So the first thing you can see here is that I am under the advanced settings within my router. So I went to 192.168.1.1. I logged into my router. Then I went into the settings, in this case, under LAN setup in my router. And I, and I have an option called address reservation. And under address reservation, reservation, I have a address, an IP address reserved for my FreeNAS server, for my HP LaserJet, and my Pi Hole. So this is where you can just click Add and put in that IP address that it provided us when we set up the Pi Hole originally in the VM machine. Remember, it started with 10. Yours will probably start with a much more normal-looking IP address like the 192 dot something, as most home networks do and you're gonna put that there. What that's gonna do is every time, if you have a power outage, you reboot your network, the, the router here is going to make sure that it doesn't assign that IP address of your Pi hole to any other device because we want all of our devices sending their DNS traffic through the Pi hole. So now we need to set up DNS to route to our Pi hole. That's our final step. And then the magic begins, the fun begins. So let's do that. Okay, so in my specific router here in the Orbi, it says get automatically a DNS address from the ISP or use these DNS servers. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my DNS, my IP address for the Raspberry Pi here. So uh, the one that it gave us, the one that we saw in the example started with 10. Again, you just put that IP address there, remove any secondary third DNS because that's a way that ads can basically circumvent the device. You don't want any other DNS servers there, just the Raspberry Pi. Click apply on this and you're going to see the magic of having no, well, not no more ads, but a lot less ads on all the devices across your entire network. This is such a cool and fun project. If your friends aren't very techy, they're gonna come over to your house, get on your guest Wi-Fi, and just be blown away by how cool it is to be on your house and go to a website and surf and not see ads everywhere. So here's CNN.com. You can see no ads coming through here, nothing annoying, nothing obnoxious. We can even go to yahoo.com and we don't have any obnoxious ads or anything popping up or showing us. Not to say it's gonna block every single ad, but it's so fast not having to download and waste bandwidth with ads. If you have an ISP cap, where you have a cap on how much data you can use, you might be surprised that you're gonna also probably save on that uh, as well. So uh, again, just a very, very cool tool. I don't know anybody who goes to Yahoo anymore, but let's pretend, we're in pretend land here. Uh, let's pretend that's the case. Now that that's done, let me know in the comments below what you think of Pi Hole, how often you've used it, maybe some settings that I need to check out myself because I'm new to the Pi Hole world. I just had to share it with all of you and go on this journey with you. So let me know if you know of some great advanced settings or things that I need to set up and check out with Pi Hole. I love to hear from the community. Speaking of hearing from the community, 
DOS Geek channel is a part of the Destination Linux network. As you guys know, I've been a part of the Destination Linux podcast for quite a while now. So go check that out if you want some extra com uh, content. But you can come out here to the forums or in the mumble rooms and things and hang out with other people who love Linux, who love open source, who love privacy and freedom out there. And in fact, you can go down here into the DOS Geek section and you could talk about this very video if you want. So if you don't wanna leave comments on YouTube, no problem, come here. This video, once it posts, there will be a link for it here on the forum and you can give me some of your hints, tips and tricks for getting Pi Holes set up or let me know that you've got it set up and send me some pictures of it. I'd love to see that too. It's very easy to do, very awesome project. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching this video.